Reading and reflecting on what the literature says about bouncing back is a good starting point. These strategies can be characterized as self-care, social support, mindfulness, and well-being. But let's break down those big, broad categories into something smaller, more achievable, if you will. How do these categories translate into real-life strategies? Let's bring in the human element. I think a big part for me in fostering resilience is just relying on other people. Um, so my sister is... Uh, in her medical residency, and there's been a lot of similarities, I think, in our experiences. I think the postdoc is very similar to a medical residency in many ways, and so um, she's been a great support system for me when I've had things come up that I want to talk through. Um, my family, my partner, um, even my coworkers, I feel like are a great source of um, support when something is stressful. I think just Having other people who are able to sort of empathize um, and understand what I'm going through is really helpful for me. But then we always have times where it is really tough. And I think in those instances, I try to take breaks um, because I feel like if I uh, stay with it too long, sometimes it gets too hard and I actually hit roadblocks more that way. Whereas if I take breaks, sometimes I come back a bit more fresh. Um, and I try to do things that I enjoy outside of it and try to remind myself that, you know, my life is not just my career as a scientist. That part is very important to me, but it's not the end all be all of who I am. So I try to also mitigate it kind of thinking through, you know, it's okay to be stressed about this thing, but it doesn't mean, you know, everything about who I am or my success. Um, in the short term, when I'm trying to recover from stress, I do things like uh, eating cake or taking a nap. Um, but thinking longer term strategies, um, I have a network of people that I rely on for support, um, that I talk to when something's going bad. Some of the times that's family members who are outside of my work, but that's also could be my mentors. Um, and my colleagues, so other people who were graduate students with me, who are postdocs with me now. Um, and that's really important to be able to sort of let things go. Um, I've struggled with this for a long time, and I used to sort of follow general advice, which was to exercise and to um, take self-care. And I think those things are um, good and I think they work, but for me really what I do with stress is just allow myself to check out and tell myself that I'm better able to address whatever is stressing me out, whatever problem or situation is causing me to be anxious. Um, if I just give myself some time to do the most ridiculously stupid things possible, to watch Netflix, to take a nap, to hang out with my dog or my ch family. Um, and I know that when I come back to the problem, it won't seem so large and it won't seem so looming and it'll be much more manageable and I'll have much better ideas about how to solve it. So to recover from stress, I like to play tennis. I've been a lifelong tennis player. Um, I also enjoy to travel, as I mentioned, and I love spending time with my family and friends. So I think part of it is um, always remembering why you're doing what you're doing. So I'm here to try to help other people do their work, and I do the best that I can to help them do their work. Um, often when things go wrong, um, you really just have to not take it personally or if, if people are annoyed because things didn't turn out the way that they wanted them to turn out. I think it's really just problem solving and thinking about, okay, how can we make this better the next time? Not dwelling on the fact that something went wrong, but moving on um, and making sure that the next time that doesn't happen again, I think. Um, and the whole idea of that it's not personal. I think that's really important because if you take it all personally, then it's going to be very, very difficult because um, everybody has frustrations and disappointments and those sorts of things. Um, and I think it is important to have a life outside of um, the work that you do, to have things to do that you really enjoy, whether it be, I like I like doing things, um, so my hobbies tend to be things where I can actually fix something, like the garden. Um, you know, it's there's making order out of things, um, pulling weeds. Uh, that's you know, I think that pulling weeds in the garden is not very different than um, some of the things that I do at work in terms of trying to help. I don't know the workflow of uh, something that's not going in a good direction or whatever. But I think it is really important to have some of those things that allow you to step away from work 
um, and really just not think about work, but do other things. Very concretely, I run and I do yoga. I also cook. Um, but I think, you know, I, I think recognizing that your career, your research isn't the only important thing in your life allows you to put it in perspective and probably whether you have time to do yoga or run or whatever, recognizing that may just reduce your stress level. So I have a pump up team. So it consists of my partner, my sister, my parents, and some close friends. And so if I have a really stressful day or something happens, I just immediately want to vent about it. I know that's probably not the healthiest uh, for mental health, but it's good to just get it off your chest and then um, have people validate you and have people really pump you up or say, you know, like encourage you to go for the next step or continue on. Um, so I think that's critical. One of the things that I've really tried to learn in the last couple of years is, is mindfulness and self-compassion. Rather than saying, oh, I should power through this, or I shouldn't be tired, or I shouldn't be feeling these things, is just to say, you know, actually today was really, really stressful, and I need to just take an hour, and I need to find a way to, to just let the stress out so that I'm not just keeping it inside. And I guess that's the thing that I've learned about stress, is that recognize it, see it, work through it, decompress, and don't pretend like it's not happening. Community is really important for me. Um, I am extroverted, even though social interactions are difficult. Uh, and so having people over in small doses is really important for me. Um, and just finding connection and community. Um, I think storytelling is another big part of that for me. I'm a writer as well, and so I like to uh, have writing or, or telling stories as my creative outlet. Um, one of those is uh, Dungeons and Dragons, so I also play Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, I love fish, so I have a lot of fish tanks at home. Well, currently too, but uh, fish tanks are a passion as well. So yeah, just finding little projects, uh, whether they're hobbies or side projects, sometimes they have a lot more to do with what I'm doing at work, and other times they don't necessarily align as well. Um, but finding those spaces to be who I want to be um, and what I want to be doing outside of the setting of, of, uh, of my job. I guess the one thing I try to do is go on a walk at least every other day. Um, at lunch sometimes, at work, it's good to stretch my legs because I'm sitting in front of a computer all day. So go for a walk. Um, so my brother was getting into roasting his own coffee, so he taught me how to do it. And so that's something that I do for myself that I really enjoy. It's kind of like a little experiment but uh, I really enjoy my morning coffee. That's a big ritual for me. Something that I do is actually monthly. So monthly I get together for dinner with some neighbors that are other women that are working that are moms. And so the four of us can get together and, um, you know, consult each other and uh, console each other and just talk about whether it's work or our kids or husbands. Um, so that's sort of uh, a personal a self care is to have um, dinner with these other women that, you know, then they, they started as neighbors and have developed into friends. Uh, for me, music is incredibly important. So I listen to music before I go to work, loud with a speaker, and then while I'm at work, I like to plug in my headphones and listen to music, depending on what I'm doing. If it's something that is very tedious, I like fast-paced music, and it's something that requires concentration, I like low mellow music or even instrumental music. So music for me is fundamental. Most of the strategies that you heard about focus on recovery. It's harder to imagine how we bounce back through adaptation. When you think of recovery, you might first think of how you relax after a long day at work. These are examples of external recovery, the actions that take place outside of the workday or outside of the workplace. But as I listen to those interviews, I hear strategies both inside and outside of the workplace. Yeah, that's right. Bouncing back, as you said, can be internal or external to the workplace. That internal recovery might just be you know, a short period of relaxation that takes place within the workday. This could be something you look forward to or something that re-energizes you to finish the work week. What do you think, Olivia? That makes sense. When I was a grad student, my favorite thing to do was to use the electron microscope. I loved the whole process. 
I had to walk to a different building. The people who worked at the microscope were really friendly. And I sat alone with an electron microscope. I was definitely working when I was there, but it was a chance for me to switch things up and do a different type of work than usual. I usually felt refreshed when I went back to the lab. Are there things you do in your normal routine that help you bounce back? There's one more piece though. Although we've classified recovery as internal or external, that doesn't necessarily mean work or non-work. Have you ever had a bad day and thought about it that night? Even after you've left work, you might be laying on the couch at home, but your mind isn't recovering. At the same time, you might be thinking about your day, you know, during your commute, the good things that happened, or trying to strategize a solution to something. Researchers call this problem-solving pondering, and this can actually reduce fatigue. It sounds like whether it's good or bad comes down to your attitude. Let's be realistic. Many of us feel the pressure to work outside the nine to five. You probably already have some strategies for bouncing back. Check out the additional resources we've included below. Then you can take a minute to share what strategies have worked for you in the discussion forum. As you look over other participants' responses, ask yourself if there's anything you might like to try.